everybody, welcome back around to the Blog and Grill. I'm your host, Doug, here. With your Blog and Grill here for October 16th, 2013. I got NFL and college football picks along with top stories. But first, I want to get to the NLCS. Dodgers just winning Game 5 at 6 to 4. And I just want to start out by saying this is going to be the first time on the Blog and Grill that I will publicly defend a player and I'm going to defend Yasiel Puig because people are going to be all over him tomorrow. He misplays a ball in right field and really I'll defend the guy because he plays the game right. He plays it hard. He does celebrate a lot. He likes to get stuff done. He has a good time. So I'm going to defend him and saying that I mean he he plays with a lot of energy. He's young. He's from Cuba. He's a refugee and he's just trying to find his way in America and I think we need to really help him out and not put him down all the time just to help him out make him feel positive about what he's doing and he's not doing anything bad or any, and he's not hurting anybody so I would think everybody needs to just hop off your seal Puig's back and let him do his thing the story of the day was really Zach Greinke Greinke did pitch well seven innings six hits two earned four strikeouts Jansen gives up four hits in the ninth and two earned runs but he strikes out the side um, big hits for the Dodgers. Gonzalez had two home runs. Um, Carl Crawford, a solo shot. I, AJ Ellis, the catcher, a solo shot. So this series will be headed back to St. Louis for a big game six. That will be on Friday night. It'll be, um, yeah, that'll be Friday night. It'll be Clayton Kershaw against Michael Waka, a rematch of Game 2. Should be a great game to watch, so definitely tune in if you're at your TV, and that should be a good game to watch. I think the Cardinals are going to lock it up in St. Louis and move on to the World Series. The other series, Boston and Detroit, they have Game 4 coming up in just a little bit, just about 40 minutes away from the start of that game. We got Jake Peavy against Doug Fister. Both guys took a no decision in their last playoff start lineup for Detroit is quite different we got Torrey Hunter leading off Cabrera batting second fielder batting third Martinez cleaning up Peralta and left to bat fifth Alex Avila up to the number six hole Infantes in the seventh hole Austin Jackson eight and then Jose Iglesias in the nine hole Red Sox lineup pretty much looks the same as what they've used much throughout the playoffs against righties should be a great game tonight for sure. It's going to be important to see if PV can go deep into the ball game and give give the Red Sox bullpen a chance to maybe rest a little bit. Uihara pitched quite. He got four outs again last night. So it's going to be big. Doug Fister's going to have to come up with a big start. His last outing was in Oakland. Both guys pitched on the same day last time out. Looks like they pitched on 10-8. So they pitched last Tuesday. So these guys have almost a week, over a week off. So no, we'll, we might see some rust. Um, it should be a good game, though. We'll see some good action tonight for sure. I don't know who's going to win this one. But I think if this new lineup works for Detroit, Detroit will hit the ball better and they will win this game and take it back to, or take it to game five tomorrow, tied up at two games apiece. All right, time to get some, to some college football headlines. College football, the biggest headline, of course, has to be the playoff panel selection has the playoff selection panel has been unveiled, and we're going to take a look at that. And I'm just going to give you my reactions from what they did with that playoff uh, panel. So let's take a look at who they have on this panel. They have 13 people on the panel, and all these people are smart people. They know what they're talking about. The committee is a star-studded lineup. It has the likes of Pac-12 Commissioner Pat Hayden. Um, it has Archie Manning, Oliver Luck, uh, former coaches Tom Osborne, Barry Alvarez, Tyrone Willingham. And the biggest name has to be Condoleezza Rice. I think this is a great idea. She's a smart lady. She knows a lot about politics. She knows a lot about policies, and she understands how people want this to work. I think she's a great fit for it. They've really picked some star-studded people, and I think it's going to be good that people know who these people are, and it should be good to see um, what this committee does 
and we'll get to see what they do next year. I mean, I like what they've done with it. They picked a lot of good people to do it, and it's key to be smart. you got to bring in smart people to do the job. Smart people can figure out football if they can figure out U.S. politics. So I'm not worried about her at all, and I think they'll work it out great, and she will have a very successful time being on this selection committee. All right, enough on that. Now I'm going to pick three games for the college football for the weekend. It's my college football three-pack, and then we'll do the NFL three-pack, making up our football six-pack. So first, my first game I'm going to pick, UCLA at Stanford. I think Stanford has too many weapons. Hogan will have a big game coming back from that loss against Utah, and I have Stanford beating the young quarterback, Brett Huntley, 35-21 to in Stanford. The other big game of the weekend, Florida State at Clemson 5 versus 3. I think Jameis Winston is going to struggle. I think Clemson's defense is very underrated. I think they will get it done against this team. And I got Clemson winning this one 25-17. And the team I'm putting on upset alert this week is going to be Connor Shaw and South Carolina. Tennessee, they're going on the road at Tennessee. We saw Georgia struggle on the road at Tennessee. I think Georgia's a better team than South Carolina. And I think Tennessee... Could beat this team. Tennessee very underrated, under the radar. So I got Tennessee taking down number 11, South Carolina. All right, that's all my college football for the day, today, but we have a lot of NFL to talk about. And the first thing we're going to talk about is Roger Goodell wants to add more Thursday night games to the schedule, and I think that is the worst idea ever. The pace the games are being played at, the physicalness that, the, that is needed in each game, just the evolution of the NFL is not made up for this. People need time to heal. There's going to be more injuries if you do this, more teams really struggling to, you're going to see good teams get worse and worse teams get absolutely atrocious. The quality of play is not good. The quality of play already on Thursday night is not great. I think more Thursday night games is a bad idea for sure. And it's going to hurt the NFL. It's going to hurt the overall content of the NFL. So I hope they avoid this. I hope they figure it out and they do not do this. One player today was fined $31,500 for a hit that I do not agree with. And Dama can sue, find that much money for a hit on Brandon Whedon. And Brandon Whedon, I watched, a, I watched a YouTube video of this. And they're in, I believe the setting is they're in the NFL like officials area in wherever the NFL headquarters is. And they're talking about the play. And the guy says, call was missed. Sue lowered his helmet and hit him in the chest. Why can't you hit a quarterback in the chest? He hit him in the chest. He lowered it to avoid hitting the head. Sue should not have been fined, but really Sue is under the microscope, and he should be. I mean, Sue has been known to make to take some cheap shots, to be a dirty player, doing things after the play, before the play, in the play. I mean, Sue is a very questionable player on defense, but this is a bad call because he hit, he hit Whedon right in the chest. That's where you want people to be hitting. You don't want them to be hitting low on the knees. You don't want any head shots anymore. So if he hits him in the chest, I mean, that's all he can. That he's Where else is he supposed to hit him? I mean, come on. All right, we got a quarterback controversy in Minnesota. Josh Freeman recently signed. We'll start for the Vikings. I think this is the best option. You're bringing Josh Freeman. You're paying him the most of any of your players there. I think you just got to run him out there, see what he can give you. Don't make him throw the ball too much. Hand it off to Peterson a lot and see what he can do. And it'll be a good week to good week to integrate him into the offense. They'll be playing against the 0-6 Giants. We'll see what he can do. I think it could be a big step for Josh Freeman. And really, he needs to find a place to play because I think he's a good quarterback. He just needs to find a spot that fits him. And finally, I want to talk about the Rob Gronkowski injury. Gronkowski out, of course, after having four forearm sur four back surgeries, a forearm surgery. And I just don't think he's ready to come back. And I don't know why people have such an issue with this. I don't think there's an issue in the Patriot locker room. And I think really it comes down to whatever Gronk wants to do. I think it's good he's going out, getting a second opinion from another doctor who's not hooked to the team trying to rush him back on the field. And I think he'll figure it out, and I think Gronk will be back out there in a couple weeks, and I mean, I think he'll be good. I think he can get it done, but he doesn't want to rush back in because before he was rushed back, and he broke his forearm again, and he wasn't able to, he had to have all these surgeries. All right, time for my three-pack of NFL picks, and I'm picking the big games Dallas versus Philly. I'm taking Dallas over the Eagles 32 
28. Baltimore versus Pittsburgh. Baltimore, too many weapons. Pittsburgh, still not great. They beat the Jets, but whatever. Baltimore wins this one, 24 21 and Denver versus Indy in the Colt Bowl. I'm taking Denver. I think they're too good. I think Manning will lead a late touchdown drive like he did so often in Indianapolis. They'll beat the Colts 35 28. Thanks for tuning in, Blogging Girl. I will be back next week with more fun for you. So thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the great weekend of sports, and I will see you on probably Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good one. See ya.